What's up YouTube, MFJJ here. Have you ever wondered what really makes a bow accurate? You know, manufacturers have different numbers and statistics that they try to show you to prove that there's bow ac their bow is accurate. But I use different measurements to determine what I really think is an accurate bow. Come along with me and I'll show you what that is. And make sure to hang around to the end to we'll actually show you the statistical numbers we're talking about so you can write them down. Hey guys, thanks for coming back. MFJJ here, talking about what makes these things accurate. Before I get rolling on that, how about a subscribe? How about a like? Love a little bit of that. Head on over to my Instagram and say hi to me over there and follow along as well. So, bow manufacturers like to use a couple different things to determine what they claim accuracy derives from. And they like to use what axle to axle, and brace height. Those are the two main things they try to use to determine what really makes a bow accurate. And the axle to axle length is pretty self-explanatory. It's from the, the hole pin and the hole pin where they go into the axle to actually measure how long a bow is. They do the same thing here, they do the same thing here. Now, that's wrong and I'll tell you why. The riser is where accuracy is derived from in a bow. So the metal portion in the middle here, that's where your accuracy comes from. So what you should really be measuring isn't the axle to axle length, it should be the overall riser length because that's what you feel at full draw. And the overall end to end length at full draw too as well, but that's a little harder to measure when you're in a shop. So if you're just trying to come to your own conclusion, it's probably a better way to go. And we will be adding these measurements going forward to every bow review we do so you can have that information. But how you determine how long a riser is is relatively simple. Overall riser length, right here. And this 29 inch axle to axle bow, if you look at the riser, is about 27 and a half. If you go limb pocket to limb pocket, which is another relevant one, is slightly over 29. So that's gonna be an insanely long risered bow for its axle to axle. Uh, we tried to grab three six inch brace height bows, give you an equivalent, a Bowtech, a Matthews and a Hoyt. Go over to our Bowtech here, and we'll go where the uh, limb pocket meets the limb pocket. This 32 axle to axle bow has a 29 inch overall riser span if you include the limb pocket, which is a fair way to do it. This 30 inch <clears throat> axle to axle Ventum Pro, if you go limb pocket to limb pocket where the limb and the pocket touch, this is about 27 and a half. So these are all similar length bows, but ironically this 29 inch bow has a longer riser than either of these two bows that are both longer. So if you're trying to look at a forgiveness factor in riser length, which matters overall over everything in the stability, because the longer your riser is this way, the slower this movement becomes when you're trying to level it out. That's pretty important. So that's number one thing to check. What's my overall riser length is where part of your stability is gonna come from. The number two thing the manufacturers like to use to measure is brace height. Brace height is the measurement from the shallowest point in the grip to the bowstring, right? We all know this, anybody who's looked at my videos probably is aware that's how you measure brace height, right? Well, so that, once again, to me, is the wrong thing to measure. What you should be measuring is how much reflex a bow has, not how much brace height it has. What is reflex? Reflex is the distance in a riser design. In fact, let me stick the limb leg on here to make this a little easier to follow. And I'm only using this one because it's easy to sand upright for you. Okay. So, where the limb and the limb pocket meet, up and down, is the pivot point of a bow. It's the point in which the bow wants to naturally rotate on when you fire it. So if I can turn that to where it's relatively straight, that's the line a bow wants to rotate on. The distance behind that is how much reflex a bow has. So if you go to there, this bow has mm, two and, let me see here, probably two and three quarters to two and seven eighths inch reflex design. 
So the farther you get your handle behind here, right, the more torquey a bow is going to be. So that's really the measurement you should be using for how forgiving left to right a bow is going to be. And to give you some comparisons in that, we'll measure the reflex of each of these three bows. So basically, the lower the reflex number, the less torque the bow is naturally going to apply. So the less consistent you have to be when holding it. So let's start with the Hoyt. I'm going to try my best to hold this square. I may make a tool to make this easier in the future. So it can be a little more uniform. So your Hoyt's run in two and three quarter, two and seven eighths inch reflex. We'll do this one again so it's in front of me. Make sure I'm being fair here. Yeah, I'd call that straight three. So that has a, that Matthews has a little bit more reflex. Your Bowtech. CP350, and this is always where your Bowtex is going to shine, has an inch and three quarter reflex. But if you look at these three bows from the dimensions that you would normally measure them off of, they would look like they're all the same. Well, all three of those are different in a measurable, tangible amount. So what do we want to do? Going forward, we want to measure overall riser length and the amount of reflex in a bow it's going to better determine for you which one's more accurate and which one's less accurate. And quite frankly, I'd almost throw out the brace height and axle to axle measurement. But for our bow reviews, we'll still include those in them because that's what the manufacturer is telling me and we want to hold them accountable for what they're saying. So those are the two little tricks that I really use to determine which one's going to be more accurate and more forgiving for me. So make sure to hang on to that information every time you're looking at a bow. Now, Maybe you think I'm a moron. Maybe you think that's total hooey and hogwash. So you let me know what you think below. That's what the comments are for. Tell me I'm stupid. Tell me I'm smart. Whatever you think, just give me the feedback because I like the communication and I like the interaction with that. But for me, that's what I have used for 20 years to determine which one I think is going to be more forgiving. And I haven't really measured an axle to axle or brace height for personal usage since. So something to think about in there and some other things to, uh, to measure in accuracy. We will make sure to add that to the videos going forward. But uh, hey, head on over to PodiumArcher.com for all those archery needs. If you can buy something from us, it helps support us, helps keep us giving you this information and giving you this content back to you so you can better make future decisions and bow purchases that you're buying at your shops locally and around the country. Like and subscribe. Peace.